in the german tongue in the polish town scrapped flat by the roller of wars 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 but the name of the town is common my polack friend says there are a dozen or two so i never could tell where you put your food your root i never could talk to you the tongue stuck in my jaw so in the fourth stanza uh, the poet tells about her father and his origin she knows that uh, he came from a polish town where of course uh, german was a you know first language spoken there so she tells that the town where he grew up Uh, there was always war one after the other she would never be able to identify which uh, specific town it is she don't know the name of the uh, name of his hometown so this stanza ends uh, with a mid sentence you know the speaker begins to explain that she learned something from her polack friend that the name of the polish town her father came from was very common you know it has a very uh, common name so for this reason she concludes that she could never tell where he put his foot she don't know the you know the origin the real origin um about his father sorry about her father so it's clear that she will not ever be able to know exactly where his roots um, are from she never asked uh, to him because she never talked to him she always had a fear in her mind so after this the speaker then explains that she was afraid to talk to him of course so she states that the tongue stuck in my jaw it it explains everything that she felt uh, she wanted to talk to her father but still there was a there was an element of fear in her that uh, prevented her from talking to him so she don't know about his you know all his whereabouts his hometown his family his roots it stuck in a barbed wire snare itch 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 i could hardly speak i thought every german was you and the language obscene an engine an engine chuffing me off like a jew a jew to duck you or switch bells and i began to talk like a jew i think i may well be a jew So the last line of the previous stanza was the tongue was the tongue stuck in my jaw. So uh, in this stanza, it's a continuation. You know, she she felt like as though her tongue was stuck in a barbed wire. Itch, uh, itch is the German word, and it stands for I. So I I I. okay she she wanted to uh, talk to her father but she could only uh, stutter and say i i i so she was not able to uh, you know have a full length conversation with her father she uh, she then describes that she thought every german man was her father so this reveals that she see no difference between um other men and his father you know she does not distinguish him as someone familiar or close to her she sees him as any other german man you know harsh and obscene and she herself felt like a jew under the control of her german father 
So this is a very, uh, you know, strong comparison. And the speaker knows this. Or the poet know. Um, and she, even if she is talking about her father, she does not hesitate uh, to tell this to her readers. Uh, the the suffocation she felt, the oppression she suffered, um, you know, under the control of her father. And so that's why she compares it to the oppression of Jews under the Germans in the Holocaust. And here comes that metaphor of Holocaust. So for this reason, see, uh, she uh, mentions Auschwitz. Um, among other concentration camps. So she was like a Jew under the control of her German father. She then concludes that she began to talk like a Jew, like one who was oppressed and silenced by the German oppressors. And she concludes that a uh, stanza that um, she, she felt the oppression that the Jews also felt and so she identifies herself with a Jew and so that's why that uh, comparison becomes very important you know she considers herself as a Jew and uh, father as a tyrant German ruler the snows of the Tyrol the clear bear of Vienna are not very pure or true. With my gypsy ancestress and my weird luck and my tarot pack and my tarot pack, I may be a bit of a Jew. So in this stanza, the poet continues to criticize the Germans. Um, the snows of Tyrol and the clear beer of Vienna. So these are comparisons to the Germans idea of racial purity. She concludes that they are not very pure or true. She considers her ancestry and the gypsies were part of her heritage. Gypsies like Jew were singled out of the execution by the Nazis. So the speaker identifies not only with Jews but also with gypsies. They also suffered. So in fact she seems to identify with anyone who has ever felt oppressed by the Germans. She was one among those who were under the control of Germans. So in the last line of the stanza the speaker suggests that she is probably part Jewish and part gypsy so she not only identifies herself with a jew but also part of gypsies because they also were uh, you know executed by the nazi i have always been scared of you with your luftwaffe your gobled goo and your neat mustache and your aryan eye bright blue Panzer man, panzer man, O oh you, not God, but a swastika. So black, no sky could squeak through. Every woman adores a fascist. The boot in the face, the brute, brute heart of a brute like you. So in these stanzas, we can realize that finally our poet, uh, you know, found out some courage to address her father because now he is dead. Uh, she admits that she has always been afraid of him. She feared him. And um, she tells that her father has some sort of connection with the uh, Air Force and that's why the word Luftwaffe you know, um, translates to English then Gobel de Guk it's simply gibberish you know this uh, 
it implies that the speaker feels that her father and his language made no sense to her so uh, she felt afraid of him and feared everything about him his language and she was also never able to understand him she was afraid of his neat mustache his aryan eye bright blue so this description of eyes um implies that he was one of those germans whom the nazis believed to be a superior race you know aryan with a blue eyes so he was something fierce and you know terrifying to the poet and uh, she associates him closely with the nazis a panzer man was a german tank driver and um, you know here the comparison he compares her she compares her father with a nazi then we can see that she also compares her father to god as an ominous figure you know overbearing you know being who clouds her world she describes her father as a giant black swastika that covered the entire sky you know there is a, a sarcastic description of women and men like her father you know every woman adores a fascist and then she describes the violence of men like her father and she calls her calls him brute three times so she believes that women for some reason or another tend to fall in love with violent brutes you know just like uh, you know that was also her feeling she feared her father but there was some sort of you know soft corner or uh, you know love in her mind that's why she uh, addresses her father brute and at the same time as god she compares him to a nazi and at the same time uh, one among the man of a superior race of an aryan with a blue eyes so such a grand personality